Hi, hello, and a warm welcome to Knit in the City. I'm Rebecca, the city is Malmö, and today I'm back with a monthly roundup <clears throat> where I will tell you about all the things that I've been knitting on, my finished objects, my plans for the upcoming month. Uh, it is very hot. <laughs> I'm wearing the coolest garment that I could find in my wardrobe. Uh, this is the Flutter Butt Shirt by Jessie Mae Designs, uh, knit in a linen, viscose and cotton blend. Uh, the yarn is called Linnea by Sevek and it's a fingering weight yarn. I'm not going to stand up because my belly would be hanging out <laughs> and you don't want to see that. Uh, yeah, I have the door, I've opened the door. And you can see that my face is covered in a film of sweat. Uh, well, I hope you can't, but <laughs> if you can, I'm aware. Nothing I can do about it. Uh, yeah, the door is open. I felt like the seagulls had calmed down a little bit, but I mean, they are here somewhere. So apology apologies if they turn up also out of my hands. Yes. Okay, let's get down to it. Um, my plans for June, I'm going to tell you how that went. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, it's like, as per usual, uh, I make plans, I do something completely different. But yeah, things happened. My finished objects for June, I think actually, yes, uh, the Darjeeling blouse I showed you in the last episode. But this, because I filmed the last episode in June, and no, not the last episode, the last roundup episode I filmed in June. Uh, and so the Darjeeling blouse is a project that I did finish in June, but I wanted to show you that I put buttons on it. I mean, these are just like regular plastic buttons with a little bling in the middle. But I thought they looked nice with this. As you can see, I still haven't blocked it. And I mean, that's just because I'm lazy and I don't like blocking because <laughs> it's boring and it takes time. Uh, but yeah, so this now I have buttoned it. The edges roll a lot. It has an I cord edge here, which rolls a lot. So it has to be blocked because I'm not going to be wearing it closed because this is a summer garment and I want it to be airy. Uh, about, I mean, I did talk about this before, but I will, I don't remember what size I made, but this fits me pretty spot on. Uh, it is, I can button it, but it's not loose. It's like, it's not tight, but it follows my figure, so to speak. Uh, this has a really fun construction. And uh, with this uh, super cute peacock edging and uh, pico and peacock <laughs> edging. Uh, you cast on double the amount of stitches unless you choose to make a provisional cast on, which I didn't. You get like three different cast ons to choose from. Uh, I think I did a figure eight. So then you cast on double the amount of stitches. Uh, that you need uh, and, the, I, and the, it is knit from the bottom up but that wasn't such a big I mean it is kind of short but all of my things turn out pretty short I think just because you feel like you want to finish things uh, yeah uh, I think I mean I think this is a saddle shoulder this was a really fun construction because um, you make the decreases on the outside here and yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail, uh, but I can highly recommend this pattern. It was a lot of fun to make and I'm thinking to make the Darjeeling top as well. And I think I've talked about it before, but now that I've knit this, I feel even more excited about doing that. Uh, yes, what else? The yarn is like a really old yarn that's from the back of my stash. It's Falk Gone Emma 
and it is a I have one skein left because I had three skeins of this and I only used two for this which is pretty amazing uh, these are 100 gram balls this is uh, 84 mercerized cotton uh, it is 300 meters uh, on a 100 gram skein yes and now I have one skin left that I don't know what to do with because I don't think I can get a garment out of it. I mean, even if this is like a flimsy tank top, a hundred grams of sport weight cotton is not going to be enough to make a garment for myself. Perhaps for one of my kids. Yeah, that could work. I have also been thinking of making a bag from this because that's also nice. I haven't decided on a pattern yet, but I mean, I'm still thinking. Okay, so this one you had seen. The next finished object of June, which is the only other one, that is uh, the retro button top, top by Vit the Design. And I have knit this in Sandnes Line. I think this is actually the first time I'm using Line. I have knit with the Tin Line before, and I've talked about it at length here, but uh, the thicker version, this is a worsted weight. It's like, I would say that it's probably two strands of Tin Line. Uh, this is also a really lovely yarn. It does make for a warm garment, so it's not as lovely in the summer as the Tin Line, but I still liked it. And this is a... Uh, Cotton, mostly cotton, uh, viscose, and a bit of linen, and it is lovely to knit with. And it, I mean, funnily enough, it does have a little bit of elasticity. I mean, it's nothing like wool, of course, but it feels just it feels more elastic than these fibers would be on their own. Uh, yes, I have knit the retro button dress before, and I've actually put buttons on that as well. So I'm going to show you. I mean, you probably can't see the whole thing. I'm probably going to have to take a picture. But I put buttons on the dress, finally. And I have been wearing this, too. I mean, if I back up, perhaps you can... Ooh! <laughs> I'm not going to get the whole thing in the picture. Uh, yes. Uh, and the reason I'm showing you this is because these are both knit from the bottom up. The dress is knit in the round and you just add a button band, but it's not, you can't really, you can't actually open the dress. So I was thinking, I don't like to have like gaping holes between the buttons where my flesh shows through. And I also don't like a really like big sack of a dress. So this was supposed to be knit back and forth and have actual actual working buttons but i decided to make this in the same way as the dress was made so this also does not i mean you can open the buttons but that doesn't open the the top or maybe you can't really open the buttons either because they're too big for the buttonholes i mean i guess you could if you really worked at it but never mind uh yeah so this is worked from the bottom up but i made i made it in the round but it's actually knit back and forth. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of short, but it works pretty well with my high-waisted skirts that I usually wear this time of year. Uh, really like the color. It's very summery and nice. Uh, yeah. I don't think... Yeah, those are the finished objects. And then I will talk a little bit of what plans I had made for June and how did that go. Uh, the, the UFOs that I wanted to finish was uh, my Sarah top by Sari Nordlund. And I have that here. And I am happy to say that I have actually been working on this. So I can show you some, I mean, if you have been with me for a while, <laughs> you must be really sick of watching the sausage of fabric that I've been showing every time. But now this has turned into something that actually resembles a tank. Let's see, this is probably, 
No, this is the right way. Okay, yes. So now I have been making these. I've actually made the straps for the front. And I mean, this is hard to show because everything is on one needle. So you may you knit this from the bottom up in like a kind of broke. This is a free pattern, so I can tell you what I've been doing. Uh, it has a one one rib edging and then you knit. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, knit and purl every other stitch. On the other side, you knit all the stitches. Yes, that wasn't so hard. And you make the button bands as you work on this. Uh, and then you make all of the little, all the fronts and the backs on their own. So this whole thing is knit back and forth, of course. But then you knit like the left front all the way here, the right front all the way here. And the back is exactly the same. So I'm going to make two more of these. And then I will graft them together. I will, I will graft the straps together at the top. You can bind off and sew them together. But I mean, I like the look of a grafted seam better. And it's also easier, fewer steps. Now I'm showing you the inside of the garment. And this is the outside. So I feel really happy with the progress that I have made and I am positive that I will be able to finish this during this month. Uh, the yarn is so <laughs> is a really old yarn. This is 100% cotton. It's like a uh, it's uh, like it's flat. It's not round. I think you can see that. Uh, it's a DK weight. I mean, I guess you could use any DK weight cotton yarn to make this. So, and I'm not using the yarn that is recommended in the pattern. Because this, this is a Novita pattern. So I'm, uh, I assume that they are using one of their own yarns, of course. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Uh, not much more to say about it. Happy about the progress that I've made. Sticking to the schedule. Okay. Uh, the next ufo i was going to work on was the compass sweater which is a tin can knits pattern and i am making the sweater for my daughter in uh, Vulevu, Vulevu, uh, <laughs> uh, which is superwash marine uh, baby baby marina i think it's called uh, which is a superwash merino suitable for baby and kids garments it's really soft you can put it in the washing mach machine um, <clears throat> what was I going to say about that? Yes, I have not been knitting on that at all. Uh, in last episode, I showed you, I, I finished the body. I only have the sleeves left. There is something about sleeves and me that don't go together. I don't know why it's so much harder to make sleeves than it is to make a body, which is bigger. But I mean, I think it's because you, I mean, even though I have done this many times, you kind of think that it's a sleeve, it's small, but then it still takes a lot of time. I don't know. Uh, and also when you are working on a piece and you have to stop and just pick up stitches again, that just makes it, it just like, it hint, halts your progress was what I was going to say. Yes. And that also makes it a bit... I mean, it's easy to leave a project there. I don't have uh, the compass sweater with me, I think, or do I? I'm gonna go see if I do actually. No, I do not, it's not here, sorry. But I can put a picture. Um, it's from the Tin Can Knits book, Strange Brew, which is really amazing. It has a lot of uh, stranded color work yokes, and it also teaches you how to make your own color work yoke sweater uh, according to your own wishes uh, so check that out i mean just if you feel like it i mean i think it's great uh what else yes uh, the other thing this is the whips that i was supposed to be working on uh oh 
this is the 9 p.m. tank. This the 9 p.m. tank is also so not with me. This is a pattern by Tiffany Tai. It's a made to measure pattern. You have to measure your body and make a gauge swatch and then put your numbers into a sheet that calculates all the numbers for you, which is really great because you're going to get a garment that really fits you. Uh, yes, I have been working on the, um, wow, I should have had a cup of coffee before I did this. <laughs> The straps. I've been working on the straps, which are double knitted. Uh, there is a lot of double knitting in this pattern. I'm not, I, I mean, I am a big fan of double knitting once it's finished. I'm not a big fan of actually doing it. So that's why this has come to a halt. I made the first strap. I haven't yet picked up for the second strap. Uh, the pattern is also, you have to like skip between different sections and pay attention, remember where you're at, all of these things that you don't really feel like doing in the summer. And I'm also knitting this from a wool yarn because I want it to be a layering piece and not it's not intended for summer wear because this is a tight fitted tank. I don't want to make it in a plant fiber because we all know that plant fibers grow. Uh, yes, so, and I will also put a picture of this if you haven't seen it, but I have not been working on it. Uh, the second thing I was going to work on that was a whip was the Darjeeling blouse. And you have already seen that I finished that. So there's only blocking and sewing in the, I'm, I mean, when I'm done here, I'm gonna go block that thing. I promise. Okay, yes. Uh, I was going to cast on two new things. The first one was the Cumulus tea. I did cast this, I mean, this is a whole thing. Let me tell you the story about the cumulus tea. And this is because me and plant fibers, we don't really get along. I mean, I'm not going to say we don't get along. We just don't know each other so well any yet. Anymore. What? We just don't know each other very well yet. Because uh, with wool, I rarely make gauge swatches when it comes to wool garments. Because, I mean, I start knitting and I can quite quickly tell if I'm... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I can quite quickly tell if this is the garment that is going to fit or if it's going to be too big or too small. I can see that. But with the plant fibers that I have not been working on as much, I just don't really know. I mean, I know that they don't hold its shape. I know they're not elastic. I know that they grow, but I mean, with a cumulus tea, let me tell you, it's here. Uh, I think I might have started working on this last month, but I mean, I'm not sure. You, you might have seen this before. This is of, of course a petite knit pattern. Uh, that I have been drooling over for a long time. The yarn I'm making this with is the Yachtegon Eco Cotton, I think it's called. Eco Cotton Linen, something. Well, I mean, it, it, everything will be down there uh, in this white color. It looks a bit more yellow than it actually is. Uh, so with this thing, I have measured gauge on the project. I didn't make a gauge swatch. I usually just, if I feel like I need to, I measure the gauge from the project. I'm on point. I picked uh, the size extra large. That just was going to give me the measurements that I need. Uh, I had actually started working in the round I had, uh, what is happening? Uh, <laughs> I had put the sleeve stitches on hold. I was working on the body. I was like almost to my navel. And then I'm like, I should try this on. There, it could be too big. I try it on, it is huge. 
like way bigger than I thought it would be. It like hangs out in the back and uh, yeah. <laughs> so I have ripped it out. I haven't done anything since because I had other projects that was more fun. Uh, but I'm gonna go back and I'm actually, I think I'm going to go down to a medium because I mean, this happened once more this month and I will tell you about that as well. So you will get the context. I mean, this is a V-neck raglan construction, knit from the top down, as you can see. I mean, very simple, very straightforward. This is just me not knowing the materials that I'm working with. And I mean, I know I should, <laughs> but this is the, the pro, because there is another project later on, because you, I should probably just, what I feel from my experience is that I should always go down two sizes when I'm knitting with a plant fiber, like a hundred percent plant fiber. But there are exceptions to this rule and I will talk about that later. Uh, I am yet to figure out the secret behind this. Uh, yes. The next, yes, this is actually the next project. The, uh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself now. Uh, the other new thing that I wanted to cast on was the square neck tank by Helen Beba. I did not do this. I do have the yarn for it, if I can find it. Uh, uh, this is also Yachtegon, Lana Cotton, it's called. This is a fingering weight. 50% merino, 50% cotton yarn. And since this is a ribbed tank, I didn't want to go with 100% plant fiber because then the ribbing will just stretch out and not hold its shape at all. I'm hoping with a 50% wool, I can escape this problem. Yes. Uh, and before I go on to the saga with the plant fiber yarns, <laughs> uh, I will tell you about the things that I wanted to have finished. Uh, that was the 9 p.m. I only put one project and that was the 9 p.m. tank and as you all know it's not finished. I don't actually need it to be finished until autumn so I don't think I'm gonna bother myself with that now at all. Yes. Right. On to the other plant fiber projects that I've been doing, because I have been sneakily casting on something I wasn't supposed to. But this is actually a pattern that I have been talking about a lot, and I have been wanting to cast it on. I had the yarn in my stash, so nothing could stop me. And this is actually a finished object, but I finished it in July, so it doesn't count for this roundup. But I wanted to show you anyway, because the same thing happened that happened with the, the cumulus tea. Here she is. And there's a reason why I haven't sewn in the ends. And I will tell you about that as well. So this is the blouse number one by my favorite things knitwear. And I really love the result of this. After a lot of heartache and headache as well. <laughs> I couldn't choose which one to say. <laughs> Uh, the thing with it, I mean, maybe I can show you. Uh, the neckline is so pretty. This is a boat neck. And generally, I'm not a boat neck kind of gal. But there's something about this boat neck. I mean, now I have this underneath, so maybe it doesn't. That is so pretty because it's not, it doesn't go so far out on your shoulders that your bra straps show. It's just like this really beautiful neckline that it makes. Uh, I have, I, I am not sure. I had nine balls. This is Drops Bell. Uh, and it has the same uh, composition as uh, the Sandness Line, but somehow it just feels really different. I mean, it's the, the percentage on all the fibers is exactly the same, but it still feels different. Uh, I like both of them. Uh, the line is a bit nicer. This is a bit more cotton-like, I think. A bit harder on your hands. Doesn't have the same elasticity. Uh, a nice thing about this is that you can see uh, the different fibers, how they take the dye differently. So it has like a lighter and a darker strand. 
And I do like that effect because that gives that kind of marled effect uh, that the original number one blouse has because she used two different colors of knitting for all of pure silk, I think. Yes. I kind of want to just show you a little bit more. But the, the thing with this, ooh, <laughs> flash. <laughs> uh, the thing with this is that I feel like the sleeves are a bit short because with this kind of bell sleeve, you want it to come, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you what you want, but I want it to come down on, onto my hand. I think that looks really nice. But I was scared because I kind of, I'm not sure, there might be one ball hiding somewhere. But this, it, this could also be my last ball. And this is the reason that I haven't sewn in the ends. Because I'm contemplating separating this into two smaller balls and just making the sleeves longer. The body is also, it's not short, but this isn't really cropped. This goes like beyond the navel, beyond the navel. <laughs> but it is still... I mean, with the blouse, I just felt like it should be a little bit longer. But I'm not going to bother about the body unless I find the, the last skein. But I think I'm going to lengthen the sleeves. Uh, but there is this thing with the, the plant fiber yarns that they do have a tendency to grow. So perhaps these sleeves will be long enough after a few wears. But at the same time, these sleeves can't really get too long. So I'm probably going to do that. Yes. Okay, what else? Yes, I was going to tell you about my plant fiber problems that I uh, experienced with the cumulus tea. The same thing happened here. I think I also chose the XL in this pattern. And the thing with this, it says it has a 10 centimeter of negative ease is recommended. And according to the pattern, the extra large, the finished garment measures 96 centimeters around the bust. I have a 106 centimeter bust, which makes the extra large the perfect size for me. Like perfect. Uh, I measured gauge from the knitted garment. I'm spot on. And the size extra large was like, I had like, I don't know, I didn't measure it. I just tried it on when I was, I don't know. I was somewhere here, I think, when I tried it on. I don't know why I waited so long, but I mean, I just don't know these people. Okay. <laughs> yes. Then I put it on and it was so big. I mean, I had like 15 to 20 centimeters of positive ease. How is this even possible? I mean, ah, so I had to rip back. This is a size medium. And I feel like I, this is still not negative. This is like zero ease, what I have here. I like the way it fits. I don't need 10 centimeters of negative ease at all. <laughs> but this is a mystery that I need to solve at some point. I do really like the result. I need to lengthen the sleeves. Uh, and I hope to be, have done that until the next roundup. Yes, I'm gonna take this off now. Because it's way too warm to be wearing this now. Right. Okay, other things that I have been doing that I wasn't supposed to. I have cast on the Kylie pullover because, oh, I've been swooning over this pattern. And when I did the six designers thing, that's when I felt like this had to happen. Uh, this I am also knitting in drop spell. And this is a bit of a mess because I always use just one needle because other needles are in other projects. But, oh, isn't this pretty? This is the, okay. This is the back. You start with the back, then you pick up stitches for the front. So I'm here on the right front. Um, yes. What am I gonna tell you? I mean, here is what I'm, where I'm thinking like maybe this, 
making a smaller size is not always the way to go. And I should have anticipated this because this only comes in five sizes, but they are very, they are very oversized. They're like, I don't remember, but it's like 40 centimeters of positive ease or something like that. I did not want that because that's just going to make me look 10 times bigger than I actually am. Uh, I wanted to be a little bit oversized because it is see-through. So that's not really a big problem. So I was thinking, I told you before, my bust is 106 centimeters around. The smallest size makes a garment that is 122 centimeters. Perfect. This is the size I'm going to pick. What I didn't think about was that you all, it also, it's also shorter if you make the smaller size. So this is the back. And when the front reaches down here, then you're going to start knitting in the round, which means that this, my arm has to fit into this. I mean, I can tell you there is no way. Look, I'm going to show you. Um, like here is the shoulder and can you see how much arm is still there? I mean, <laughs> that is never going to work. There is just no way. And now I don't really know what to do because I mean, I can rip this up. This is not a lot of work. I mean, it does take a bit of time, but still, and, and a lot of concentration because I made mistakes. So I had to rip this part out because it has to line up here. And then you also need the need to get the, the cable crossings in the same place every time because otherwise it's going to look wonky. Uh, so yeah, I, this part I, I redid once. Um, but yeah, do I rip this out? Or because my youngest daughter saw this pattern and she was like, I want one of those. Uh, so I could just finish it and give it to her. The only thing is, she said she wanted it in green or beige. And this is pink. I, I mean, this soft pink is going to look great on her, but I don't know if she wants that. So I'm going to go talk to her and see. But I mean, I, wa I kind of wanted it to be a surprise because her, her birthday is in August, so it would be perfect. Uh, I don't really know what to do. I really want this for myself as well. Hmm. And I don't have the yarn to make her another one right now, because then I would have to buy that. I mean, and I also don't know which size I would have to be making if I was going to make a bigger, because my, it seems like even, because there was such a difference. I mean, I have proportionally large arms, <laughs> unproportionally, uh, yeah, large arms for like, I don't know. It just seems, never mind. Doesn't matter. It just seems like if I was to go up just one size, that still wouldn't be enough. And if I go up two sizes, then the, the body of the garment is going to be really big. So I really don't know what to do here, but this is super pretty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did cast on something else too, because I've been dying to make like a mesh summer bag. And when I'm talking to you right now, I'm not really sure what this pattern is called, but of course it will be on the screen. And this is a, it's called something, the market bag or something like that. This is a free pattern. And I am knitting this from 100% linen. I think that this is, Ulcentrum's Linnea. I mean, how lovely is this? I just really love an all linen yarn. I mean, and, and I mean, for a bag, this is such a sturdy fiber. So it's amazing for a bag. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be nice forever and it can really hold a lot of things. Uh, yeah. So this is a fun construction. You start with this edge and then you knit the whole mesh thingy uh, until you reach the, I don't know how long it's supposed to be, but then you make this, this garter edge again. And then you pick up stitches on the sides uh, to make the handles and to close the whole thing. Uh, 
Yeah, and about the linen yarn, I mean, a lot of people say it's hard on your hands, and I do agree, but I still really love knitting with it. And I especially love finished objects from this yarn because it only gets better with wear. It only gets better every time you wash it. It just gets such a lovely sheen to it. Uh, it makes for super durable garments that are also very breathable. It just transports moisture away from your body. So yeah, love, love, love. Uh, I don't have a lot more to say about this. So I think that's all of the like sneaky cast-ons that I did. I have been working on another project as well. And uh, yeah, it's down here somewhere. Uh, this is uh, Rebecca Clow pattern. This is the Lauder V-neck cardigan actually. And look how pretty this is. Oh my God, she makes such well thought out patterns. They are so pretty. It, this also takes uh, some concentration. I mean, I had actually <laughs> turned the cable the wrong way and I didn't notice until I had knit like quite a bit. So I, ha I have ripped this out once uh, and done over. I am knitting this in dr uh, Drops Lima which is a alpaca wool blend. Quite soft and nice. Uh, I am, this is the back. I mean, I love this cable that just goes down the, when I see this, I am afraid that this is going to be too small. I need to measure gauge for this, I think, before I knit on. It's like, I don't know. I mean, it could work, not sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, it seems like I haven't done much since last, and I haven't. I mean, I kind of do because I ripped it out and re it. Uh, but I have, uh, I'm done with the increases, and now I'm just knitting straight. Uh, and since, I mean, even if this is a wool alpaca thingy, it's so small, it can still be worked in the summer. If it's not like a super hot, I mean, we had a couple of days where we there was it was almost thirty degrees, and then you're just like trying not to move at all, <laughs> to not die. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm from the north. We can't handle that kind of heat. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, plans for July is uh, next on the agenda, and. I was thinking to make it easy for myself. I mean, I'm still suffering from the sock craze I had last summer. I cast on so many socks. I mean, it feels like I almost only knit socks last summer. And I just don't want to see a sock. I mean, because now I have all of these sock UFOs from last summer. And I, oh, this just really killed my sock mojo. So, I mean, I will, I will take... I will learn from this. I will learn from this. But what I was thinking is, because I have a pair of confetti cake socks, and designer's name up there, uh, that I started last summer, and I have finished the first sock, and I, yeah, this is UFOs. Two U UFOs that I want to finish uh, in July. So yeah, I finished the first sock. And this is like a, just all kinds of bits and bobs that I have, that I had in my stash. All sock yarn. The main yarn, let me see if I have a little ball of that. Yes. Um, this is the Stranded Dye Works sock yarn. I don't remember what it's called. It was a sock set. So this darker green was uh, the mini that came with the sock set. Uh, I have already knit a pair of socks with this yarn. Uh, I will put name and picture here because now I just can't seem to remember what that sock was called. Uh, but it, it's a Rachel Coopy design. Uh, the other yarns are... This is a Yarbo... What is the, their thin sock yarn called? Uh, Junior Raggy. Yes. And this is the same. 
This is a, ooh, what is this? I think this is a Sandness sock yarn that I can't remember the name of. And what else? This is a West Yorkshire Spinners four ply sock, I think it's called. And the last one is not here, but it's, yeah, it is. This is the purple one. This is a Lorna's Laces Shepherd sock. Yeah, that was all. Uh, and I mean, this is how far I have come on the second sock. And these are like, shorty socks so i mean there's not a lot left to do i should be able to do this the only thing is that i find it so boring so boring i don't know i mean i just i'm just not into knitting socks anymore and i hate it because it was kind of my favorite thing to knit before before i burnt out on socks but i should be able to do this and i also kind of like wearing shorty socks now after I started knitting them for myself. Hmm. Yes, I'm definitely gonna hunker down on this. Uh, the other thing I want to finish, no, not want to finish. No, the other UFO that I want to work on in July is also a sock that has been hanging around for a really long time. And these are the Vervain socks. Sorry, there would be a bit of a plastic the sound of plastic uh, this is from uh, the lovely book 52 weeks of socks I have finished the first sock I will try to show you the lace border here this is like leaves it's so pretty and the yarn I have used is Emily Lee knits what is it? it's something silk Something with silk. Yeah, I mean, it's in the description box. Dreamy silk. So this is a merino silk blend. And I know what you're thinking. That is not a sock yarn. It's not. But, I mean, I have knit a pair of socks in a Regia silk sock, I think. Which is a wool silk blend. That is supposed to... It is a sock yarn. And I think I knit these socks... 15 years ago. These socks don't have a single hole in them. And I am hard on my socks. I wear them in my shoes. I mean, my hand knit socks are pretty much the only socks that I wear during winter. And I mean, 15 years of wear, not a hole. That is the silk, I'm telling you, it's the silk. I don't have any other pairs of socks that don't have holes and that I have worn for a year or so. So silk is like amazing. It is paired with merino. The other sock yarn is a sturdier wool. So, I mean, the merino is a, is a sissy. It's lovely and soft, but it's a sissy. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. I want to make the second sock. I mean, this is a bit fiddly with the whole lace thingy and it does require your attention uh, but look at the sheen of this it's like really pretty yeah this is a super pretty i mean i love the colorway as well this is not my colors because this these are like really warm but i mean i'm gonna put them on my feet so it just looks so beautiful Yes, love this yarn. And we will see. I mean, I guess this has, this has to be my party socks. I'm not going to be able to wear them every day. They're just too nice for that. Uh, I don't really feel like casting on this one at all. But I will try. I will try my best. Okay. The whips that I want to work on during July is Sarah. And I showed her before. Uh, this feels fun now that I have left the land of just knitting back and forth in this uh, super simple stitch pattern. Yeah, but yeah, so that's, uh, I feel motivated. The other thing I want to finish is the, no, not finish. The other one I want to work on during July is Kylie. 
And I have to decide what to do with this, whether to just make this for my daughter or rip it out and start over again, which is not a lot of fun, but yeah. The new things that I want to cast on, since I didn't cast on the square neck tank last month, that, uh, which I was supposed to do, I'm thinking to do it this month. And I, the reason I have been putting this off is, look at the yarn. When I picked this up in the store, I thought it was gray. I mean, it's mostly white, but it's like a grayish white. But when I see this in daylight, I'm thinking, are you beige? Are you beige? And I don't look good in beige. Unless it's a really pinkish beige. Uh, so I don't know. I think I'm going to do it anyway. And just see how this comes out. What happens. If it looks bad, I guess I can just dye it. Yeah. Uh, the second thing I want to cast on is something that I already did cast on once and failed. No, I didn't cast it on once. I cast it on twice. Uh, and this is the Outline Tea by Jessie Mae Designs. I have this 100% uh, cotton yarn, uh, and you can see what it's called here. Uh, it has, I think it's 170, not centimeters, <laughs> that's a very little yarn, 170 meters on this ball, so like a sport. Uh, so the story of the outline tea is that I cast it on in Sandnes Mandarin Naturel which is a thicker yarn. It has 130 meters on a 50 gram ball. And that was too... I mean, it, it would have been okay the way it looked, but I only had four balls, so it would not be enough to make the whole tea. Also, it did turn out a little big because the yarn was thicker. Uh, this one is much better uh, in that respect. And I also have six balls of this, so I'm not going to run out of yarn. Uh, I did cast it on, only to discover that I had... Uh, what do you call it? It was... It was twisted, yeah. It was twisted rib, and it was twisted. So <laughs> I cast on a lot of stitches, and somehow, even though I thought I was really careful, I twisted it. So, a lovely viewer advised me to knit back and forth for, for a few rows before I start knitting in the round. And then you just sew up the little gap, uh, which is a great idea. And I think I will be doing that because I don't want to fail again. Uh, I have lost a bit of interest in this project since I've already knit on it twice. And the first time I knit like this much, I think before I realized that there is no way this is, because that, that took one ball of yarn this much. Uh, and there's no way that four balls is gonna be enough. Uh, the second one I only knit like this much because I could see that it had been twisted. But yeah, motivation is not super high for this one, but at the same time, I would love to wear the finished object. I have a skirt that is perfect uh, to go with this color yarn. Yes. So I want it to happen. Uh, the things that I want to have finished is the confetti cake socks that I just showed you. And I also want to finish uh, the Sarah top which I think I will be able to. I mean, both of those are like not super ambitious. I think I'm, I'll be able to do it. The socks is like the one that is most likely to fail because I just find it so boring. Maybe I should just like do like three or four rows a day and then it, it'll be bearable. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. Just uh, enjoy your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.